If you're like me, you've been working months on your project and you've finally come to the point where it's time to tackle the wiring harness. I saved it for last probably because I'm a procrastinator and the wiring can be the most intimidating part of the whole process. You may be in the same boat. Let me show you some of the things I've done to try to get organized and tackle this in a way that's systematic and try to take some, some of the complexity out of it and try to break it down into little pieces so that it's much more manageable and not near as intimidating. Let me show you what I did. Before I ever started working on the wiring itself, I started taking notes and doing research. And this is something I put together. Now this is just for me, but uh, not only for what I'm working on now, but in the future if I have to make repairs or diagnose an issue, I will have information. And this is a picture I took of the truck. And it's just uh, wiring harness modifications, uh, pictorial notes and charts. Uh, LT1 Swap was a great source for uh, getting these uh, pinouts so I know what to remove and what not to remove. Uh, I've included uh, other sites I found on the internet, how they uh, wired their fuse boxes. Uh, and questions I've asked people and responses, uh, relays, depending on the type of relay it is, how they're wired, uh, and then again LT1Swap.com has a complete pictorial uh, on how they did their swap and I printed that entire thing out, it's 27 pages, and some additional notes I put in the back. All that just so that I've got a good grasp about what I'm getting ready to get into. I've also got some tools. I got some flush cut pliers and wire strippers and uh, some additional wiring. Uh, let me show you the wiring harness, what I'm doing with it so far. Uh, this is just the harness laid out on a large piece of cardboard. I, I simply laid out the harness and labeled everything. And again, using LT1SWAT.com, there are pictures that show each segment of this harness and what they are. Now something you might want to do before you begin jumping into cutting things is to determine how your harness or your setup may be different than what is pictured. In my case I have a manual transmission. I want to keep my cruise control. It's a drive-by wire and I'm gonna tackle the AC with a factory style compressor. Now to do that, for example, uh, it mentions to cut off the C-152, C-2, C-100 uh, uh, harnesses here uh, to clip off all the wires. But in my case, for cruise control, there are three wires here that go to the C-100 that I need to keep. And there's one wire here on the C-2 I need to keep. So I don't want to just go and start cutting things. I want to make sure I save those wires for the future when I decide to wire up my cruise control. For the drive-by wire, I need to keep the pink wire that comes off this harness. So I'm, I want to make sure I trace it back, find it, and keep it and label it. For the manual transmission, this whole leg, this is your, what's on the side for the, manual, for the automatic transmission. The speed sensor, that is the only wire I'll be keeping uh, other than the front O2 sensor. So, all I've done so far is simply lay it out. I removed all these little uh, harness clips that held it to various places within the engine bay. Uh, I'm going to begin, uh, much like the, the videos will show if you go to lt1swap.com site or others, they start by removing the red and the blue uh, protect, protection uh, covers here for the pins. The little uh, rubber insert, take that out. And then I'm going to start cutting this back and removing the harness only to about here. And at that point, I will begin taking the uh, pinout chart and removing the ones that need to be removed and remove the ones that need to be relabeled and reconnected into the 91. So there's no sense in going through that whole process step-by-step step here. There are a lot of places on the internet that show this. 
I don't want to be redundant and create a very long uh, video for this. But to begin with, we're just going to start by clearing this off and start taking these wires out. But we're also going to be, pay careful attention to the uh, potential AC wires that we're going to need uh, so that we don't actually uh, remove ones that we would need to have later on. Also, for the fan relay. Now, this truck is going to have a mechanical fan, but just in case... I want to add electrical fans in the future. I'm going to make sure I have the two correct wires for the lower and the high speed fan. And I'll just tape those up and, and uh, hide them in the harness. But at least they'll be there should I change my mind in the future. So I'm going to get started and I'm going to go ahead and take these uh, two uh, plugins and I've labeled them blue and red and make sure they're in the right orientation so that I can start taking this apart stripping it back to about here, cleaning it up, and begin removing some pins. One of the tools I'll be using as well, other than just a, a razor knife to cut away the harness uh, and a screwdriver to pop things out, is an ohm meter. And this is set, it's got an audible alarm for continuity, so that way we can test uh, certain, you know, any wire we need to, where it is on the pin in the connector here, to where it is, uh, let's say we're not, we don't know which wire we're uh, looking for in this harness here. We can touch it to one side, find the pin, uh, the corresponding pin over here, and if it makes an audible buzzing alarm, then we know it's the correct wire. So we'll set this aside and use it a little later. This is not expensive. This is a cheap one I got some time ago from uh, Harbor Freight for free. It's one of those free deals where you when they back when they offered coupons and stuff, and uh, the battery was dead, just replaced the battery. It works great. Okay, getting started. Ice pick is a good tool as well. You just have to gently remove the colored connectors like this. On the inside, there's a little tab on either side. Is press in lightly and lift it comes right out. And they can only go on one way. You can't put them upside down. There's little tabs or notches there that correspond with slots here. So these little colored connectors can only go in one way. Be careful and take your time as you're taking this apart so that as you clip things, you don't clip a wire accidentally. We've also got a roll of masking tape here too so as we carry it back a little further since this harness is going to remain uh, pretty much a stock harness and everything in its stock location uh, pretty much uh, we'll apply tape similar to the way it's done here. A bundle here, uh, separate bundles here, common, common. That way we don't lose our orientation of where all the wires went. At a later time, if there's a particular plug and you want to route it a different direction, uh, it's easy enough to just remove some masking tape, reroute it, maybe extend it if you need to. Uh, I'm really not going to get into uh, replacing the, uh, the PCM uh, in a different location at this time because it is, it's kind of a whole other thing. I mean, it's one thing to handle the wiring or else it's another thing to relocate the PCM. A lot of guys like to put it on the inside of the car, which is great. Uh, for your first swap, I would suggest keeping it simple so you don't get overwhelmed. And then after you've done it a time or two and you've got it down, then uh, it's easy enough to start lengthening wires and uh, rerouting them and doing something different. It's a tedious process. You just want to kind of dissect it as you go. Take your time. It's kind of a dirty process too. This wiring is nasty and uh, that's why I'm wearing gloves. When you're removing the plastic, you want to be especially careful. It's a little outer gray plastic. 
you can see it's got three tabs on each side and it's real easy to snap those off so if you press in which I did with an ice pick just a little bit on each side until you pull up one side get to the middle this one's a little harder because from here you can tell that from the indentation that there's a tab this one there's a hole so right on the outside of that hole that's where that tab is so I got these two this one worked on this end and then I pulled it out and it came out fine I didn't break any tabs I'm going to tackle the red first and not the blue again just kind of keeping it in a manageable chunk uh, stripping the wire back here very carefully slicing very light pressure you don't want to uh, cut into a wire it can create a problem later on wiring it I mean the tape actually comes off pretty easily because it's very brittle okay now we're exposing all of our, our uh, wires here kind of clean this and get a little rag and kind of clean this off so I can visualize my numbers a little bit better there's two rows they go across here starts off at 1 goes all the way through 40 and then 41 through 80 some have wires and some do not all right so looking at the C2 red which is this connector number two we're going to get rid of that second one right there these bend this little white tab up and gently push the wire through it pulls right out like so and what we'll do is once we push all the ones out of here that we need to then we'll pull it back to about here then I'll put or we'll retape this so we'll keep that bundle in the right orientation and as I go along I'm on a little mark by all the ones I've pulled just to make sure in case I should get interrupted that uh, I know where I stand all the wires that I am removing I'm going to keep separately because they are automotive grade wiring and uh, for example if you're adding an electric fan like I'm going to and this doesn't have provisions for that I can use one of these wires for that and it'll already have the correct pin Clean up the wiring on the C2 connector, and these are all the wires that I'll be getting rid of. And all the wires that are labeled in blue that we're keeping that will be integrated into the 91's harness, I labeled up high, close to the uh, connector, and as we strip this down, uh, I will pull those specific wires out so that they can be set aside to be connected separately. But in the meantime, we got rid of we're going to be getting rid of uh, quite a few wires, which is a good deal. A lot of that's because of the automatic transmission. We're not using it. So going to a manual transmission, get rid of a bunch of wires. Okay, we're going to keep forging ahead. Okay, we've been through both of the, uh, the red and the blue connectors and have pulled out all the wires that we found were not going to be needed based on these sheets. Because I'm running a manual transmission, we had to go through all the pins that were automatic transmission related, make note of those, and remove those. There were a couple of pins I wasn't quite sure. For example, a gray pin uh, it said mass airflow. Uh, it's the MAP sensor 5 volt reference, but it says 8.1 liter. So I didn't understand why I had it. So using my continuity tester on my voltmeter, I was able to find where that was and let me kind of show you what that sounds like so set it correctly for that all right the wire that was in question was this gray wire so I connected one end in here I don't know if you'll be able to hear this or not and I had a sensor here I really didn't know where it went exactly I didn't have an exact uh, position for it but there are three wires to it. You hear that? 
So now I know that goes to that sensor. I now know, even though it says 8.1 liter on the sheet, it does work in my situation. So I'm glad that was not pulled. But you may come across similar wires in your situation that maybe you have a question mark about, you don't know where they go, but you can track it down. That's why you have that continuity tester. Okay, now that we've gotten now that we've gotten these two harnesses thinned down, which is quite a bit of wiring here, now we're going to make our way back through the harness. Uh, I've already used some masking tape to kind of hold the, the harnesses together in the same configuration that they were in, in uh, originally. And the wires that are in blue, or I should say the pins that are in blue, that we're going to keep and reconnect and integrate into the 91 harness, I've tagged like this. You know, I've labeled them, you know, battery, PCM, OBD port, ground, low speed fan, uh, fuel pump relay, etc. So all those are labeled. So um, we're going to trace back all the wires that have been disconnected and pulled from wherever they go and we'll see where that takes us. So again, it's a tedious process. It's taken me a little while to get this far but I've, I've double checked and triple checked to make sure everything uh, that I need is here. Also, there is a page on the LT1Swap.com uh, site that if you are going to run a manual transmission, it does. it's not really worded that way. It's worded if you are not going to run an electronic transmission. And it shows the specific wires to pull and uh, I went through and double checked to make sure that there weren't some things I had left in uh, that were on his site. Uh, they're not yellowed, they're not blue, they're kind of in a, an orange color. Uh, and those are the ones I pulled. Anyway, all right, we're gonna work our way back through this harness and uh, to each sensor, I'm not gonna bore you with that. We're just gonna get started and I'll come back once we get this cleaned up a bit. This part of the process is a bit tedious in this finding all the wires in this bundle and pulling them through. So now is a good time to uh, enjoy a nice cool beverage or warm beverage, depending on where you are working from. Depending on where you're working from. And just go through and thin this thing out. It's gonna take a little time. Okay, we've uh, gotten these two connectors thinned out down to here anyway and you can see we've lost quite a bit of wiring that looks great here's all this extra hanging out over here uh, I apologize for skipping around a little bit but this part is just tedious removal of wires and it's about as exciting as watches watching paint dry so uh, I'm going to continue on through the process as we follow the the harness all the way around and uh, we slowly uncover the pieces we don't need. The uh, plastic loom like this, I'm going to keep setting that aside, may be able to reuse some of that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we're just going to keep going forward until we get farther into the process and I'll be back in just a minute to show you an update when we get a little farther along. I know in the general directions or instructions that you're given online and even in print, it mentions about cutting the C100 plug off and cutting the C2 off and the C152 and everything. And it's like, that's not a good idea, I don't think. Uh, it may be a little bit more work to tra track the wires back, but what I've found is for the drive-by wire, for the wiring that I need for the cruise control, four of those wires come out of the harness that is that plugs into the tack module and those four wires went into the C100. So while yes you could if you cut all this off try and track it down but you've got so many wires and you've got a number of wires that if not if they're not the same color they're so close to it they're hard to tell apart. So by knowing that I needed three wires from that C100 from here and I knew the colors, I was able to track those wires, trace them back into the TAC wire module and label them so that I've got uh, the power, 
And then these three that, uh, let's see, there's the cruise control, cruise control, those three, and that's uh, from the C2. Uh, this came from the C2. These three from the C100. And this one, uh, I cut, it's the pink wire coming out of the tack harness, and this has to go to power. So you can cut these off and just have a bunch of wires to deal with, but you've got enough to deal with as it is. Uh, as I said before, even on cutting the harness on the old vehicle, the, uh, the original vehicle, don't cut anything until you're sure everything's going to work right. Because once you cut it, uh, it could be a real problem. Also on the pins, by removing, by removing all the wiring, backing them out, and keeping the pins in place, if you should find later on you want to add, uh, let's say you want to add it at electric fans or... Uh, some other option, or if you accidentally removed an incorrect pin and figured out later that you did, uh, if you went and cut it, that would really uh, make it difficult to trace down, and then you're going to have to get one of these special pins, which is specific to what is needed to fit into these, uh, into these uh, clips. Uh, you're better off, I think, uh, backing the pins out from from the red and the blue uh, connectors, backing them all the way out, and that way you know where the wire goes. If it goes to a particular sensor and you think, uh-oh, I need that sensor, you've still got the wire and you've still got the pin to plug it back in. If you go and cut everything and start doing it haphazardly, making a repair or tracking that kind of thing down could be just a lot harder. Anyway, just wanted to bring you up speed. We are getting farther along. We're getting this uh, harness cleaned out. I've got a few more to go, uh, and then we'll tie it off here. And we'll, we will cut off all the pinks uh, that are fuel injection and all. But again, I can find out exactly which ones are fuel injection uh, just by tracing the wires back as well. Okay, it's coming along. I've got this leg of the harness done as far as thinning out. And uh, the main portion here, I haven't cut uh, the C100 block off yet. I'm just waiting to see which wires I need to, and I will eventually cut them. I just didn't want to cut them all at once. Uh, this side's done and thinned out. Now it's just the uh, side that goes along behind the motor uh, to the left-hand side. Still working on it. Here's all the wires I've pulled out of it so far, quite a few especially since the transmission is uh, no longer going to be an automatic. So we'll continue on with cleaning up and thinning out this last leg of the harness. And once it's done, uh, there is one question I'm still looking for on one of the wires. And uh, then we'll re-loom it and uh, start working on the fuse panel. Okay, we thinned out the harness. We haven't covered it up yet. We still have a few things to wrap up. Don't let this intimidate you. A lot of this gets combined and goes to the fuse box. Uh, a few things that are different in mine. Uh, temperature sensor. The temperature sensor was a two-wire sensor, and it had a green and a yellow wire. The green wire actually turned into gray and went all the way back to the pinout. So be careful about that. If the colors don't seem to match up, just trace it back a little further. Never seen that, but boy, it sure did it this time. Anyway, you need the gray, the yellow and the gray wire. Well, my sensor that I chose was a three wire and the three wire isn't the issue. It's the color of the wires that is. This particular uh, little uh, plug is red, white, and black. I bought them where they're all gray. I bought them where they're uh, yellow and gray and brown, and yet the yellow and the gray were reversed. So it doesn't matter what color the wires are. What matters is the pinout. So looking at the pinout, and uh, this is how they're supposed to be located. When you're looking at this plug, that's uh, looking at the plug, not the sensor. If you look at the sensor, 
you will end up reversing these two wires. So look at the plug out, looking at the pin out in this direction, if we label them A, B, and C, uh, C is at the top, that's this white wire that went to the uh, green, or in my case, the gray wire. And the position B was the black wire, and that went to the yellow wire. And position A is a red wire, and that'll actually be to the gauge. So now I've soldered those in place uh, so that now the wiring harness is intact. Instead of making the harness look pretty and then realizing at the last minute, oh, I've got to splice in this three-wire unit, I'm putting it in now. That way it can all be put together and look nice. Well, we finally put together enough of the truck so that it should be able to at least start and run for a moment to make sure uh, it, everything's in place and working properly. At this point, I don't have the radiator in or any coolant in it. Uh, the air box is not completely here. I just got it hooked up so that the, that the mass air is connected. Uh, batteries over there. A lot of detailing still needs to be done, but at this point, at least all the components are together so that it should run. So I'm going to connect the battery and then we'll give it a try. You'll be the first to see this. And it runs. That is the first time this engine has run since the last time it was in a Suburban. Now we finally got it running, but we have a lot of details to take care of. And I apologize for not having a video out sooner. A lot of the things that I wanted to do uh, as I was going along, I kind of changed my mind. And to show a video of every time I changed my mind and how I did something a little different uh, at the time as I was doing it, would be a long, boring video. So I'm going to try to summarize it all up with another video. This one, I just wanted to bring you up to speed on where we are with the truck. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the air box here is just kind of laying in place. I wanted to hook up the mass air to make sure everything was connected before it would, uh, we tried to start it. Uh, the wire, some of the wiring is still just laying on top of the motor here. Uh, mainly, I wanted to make sure my connections were correct. I thought they were, but I wasn't. 100% confident. I wanted to run the wire to make sure and then once I found out it would work Now I'll tuck it away and tidy it up a few details along the way that have just taken more time than I expected uh, For example mounting the power steering uh, cooler here uh, Took me a day uh, Mainly because trying to figure out how to mount it I went through about five different versions of the brackets to do it finally came up with a simple uh, Finally came up with a simple bracket that works it's taken care of, but that was a day unto itself. And there's all kinds of other little things that have just come up along the way that have slowed things down. There's also another big project coming up. We've already started. It's a little different. Check for another video. That should be out in the next couple of days. And that'll explain why there's been a delay in working on the shop truck. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Appreciate a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And uh, stay tuned, we're going to be doing more. It won't be long before we get this truck back together. The front end, all it needs to complete is the grill and the bumper and the hood, obviously. Uh, but i got to make this airbox fit. It fit great on the Suburban, but the confines of the OBS is a little smaller. So it's going to have to be modified to be able to work within this space. And these are just little things I didn't think much of at first. But once you start putting it together, it's like, yeah, it's going to make a difference. I want to run the factory style uh, air intake for that factory look. I still want to keep it that way, but it's going to be a little bit of work to massage all the parts to get everything to fit properly. So anyway, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.